Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the world's best investing podcast. Dan Ives went on CNBC yesterday and dropped a bomb. He basically said that the Bears are going to continue watching the AI party from outside of the club, that this party is just getting started because fundamentals are improving rapidly across the board, and that basically what we're seeing over this week or the past few weeks is an emotional reaction. Dan Ives. So, Dan, you know, NVIDIA's numbers really cap an earnings season where these companies pretty much did everything they were expected to do and more, um, you know, recommitting to the AI trade, essentially saying that uh, they're still uh, enthusiastic about it. Why is the market in general not really giving them credit for it? Look, first, I think that was a masterpiece quarter, right? And I think any worries about the AI bubble thrown out the window in terms of fundamentally when you heard from Godfather of AI, Chen's NVIDIA. Look, I think it speaks, and you've talked about it a lot on the show, like, worries about circular financing, yeah. like where this is going to go. Can the data centers going to get built? Is there a capacity issues? Look, I just continue to view when you put the pieces together of the puzzle, as well as, you know, our, you know, three weeks in Asia, this is third inning, top of the third, one out of this AI game. And that's why I just think name, like, names like NVIDIA, days like today, you buy names like Oracle, Microsoft, NVIDIA, because I believe this tech bull market has another two years left. I mean, as a baseball numbers guy, you know, they now, we now know sometimes the third inning is your high leverage inning, where you got to kind of bring in the, the best arms and try to put down a threat. Uh, and I'm wondering right now if, if NVIDIA's numbers, and I've been kind of puzzling over this all day, as great as they are and as much confidence as Jensen has about the next four or five quarters, you wonder if everybody can have equal confidence in the customers that are giving him all that money and allowing him to earn those margins on, on their spend and when they're going to sort of uh, get clarity about the payback. Look, it's a great point, but I would just say, look, in the U.S., 3% of companies have gone down the AI path. Europe, zero. You look at, you know, in Asia, ex-China, minimal less than 1%. Sovereigns, Middle East, just starting. I mean, my whole point is that you know, right now, demand the supply is 12 to 1 for NVIDIA chips. And, of course, AMD and others are yeah. going to play. But the reality is that we are still early. I mean, you're talking more money is going to be spent in the next two to three years in the last eight, ten years combined. So I get some of the worries, but I believe the bears will continue to watch this AI party from the outside looking in as they continue to prove it out. And I think streets underestimate numbers anywhere from 15 to 20 percent. Right. Next but, but is that months. not the bull case for NVIDIA and the whole food chain for the infrastructure build out? Can it not also be the bear case for the metas of the world and the Microsofts that feel like they're on this unending treadmill of having to spend, hoping that they get the return. Yeah, and I think, but I, I do think it's a little more than hope because yeah. the reality is that the use cases, if you almost put the piece together, look at Palantir, mm -hmm. look at MongoDB, look at Snowflake. So you see that the use cases are exploding. Look, and it's an arms race that yeah. they are having to continue to spend on, and you're going to see the same with the Oracle. But I think Meta. We look out 12 to 18 months. This was a table pounder moment, just like right. we saw with Alphabet as a table pounder. Well, I was going to get to Alphabet because that's a really fascinating situation, how it's gotten revalued higher, tremendous amount of sponsorship all of a sudden of this name that people really had a lot of skepticism about not that long ago. Now, their new model is getting raves, I guess, in terms of its performance, the new Gemini. Uh, and also, they did it, you know, kind of with their own processors. So how does that play into the whole, you know, NVIDIA at the center of this question? Sure. Well, look, NVIDIA obviously fueling its centerpiece in terms of one chip in the yeah. world. But the reality is Alphabet, you go back six, eight months ago, New York City cab drivers bearish on it, right? So it's one AI that is ultimately going to destruct the model. The yeah. opposite's happened. I mean, I think now you see Sundar and, and, and what's happening at Google, they're on the offensive. I mean, you look at what they've done with Gemini. This is just the start because the reality is in Cupertino for Apple, who are they going to for AI? It's just a matter of time until they do the Google Gemini deal as well. Yeah. So that's why you've seen that stock at continue re-rating, bull case $400. You know, my, my colleague Scott Devin and I, we've done a lot of work. Look, I believe this is one. This is a name you continue to own just still early days. Adding to what Dan Ives said yesterday on CNBC, if you read the quarterly earnings call transcripts of a lot of these companies for Q3 2025, as I have done over the past few weeks, you will see that more compute is indeed translating into more intelligence. And that translates into incremental value delivered to end customers, which is why this is so different to 2001 or even 2021, which is the closest thing we've had 
to a tech bubble recently. So for example, as an Amazon customer, you are 60% more likely to buy on the e-commerce platform if you use Amazon's Rufus, which is the AI shopping assistant. Now that is today. And that is after a few years since the LLM revolution got started. But just imagine projecting that out two or three years in time. As the model gets more powerful, how much is that increased likelihood likely to go up? Maybe in two years time, you're 95% more likely to buy something when using roofers. <clears throat> Fuck. And so you can see where this is going. AI is really driving a productivity boom. Actually, investors have been very bearish since 2021. In my opinion, they're actually still quite traumatized because what we have now is literally perfect fundamentals across the board and investors panicking because fundamentals are so good. The narrative has now tentatively evolved towards the idea that maybe these companies are cooking the books, but to me, it's a matter of incentives. So do these CEOs, which are largely billionaires as a result, of having thought very long-term, having executed beautifully for decades in many cases, do they have the incentives to cook the books right now? Probably not, I don't think so. And then qualitatively, if you just look at the amount of time people around you spent talking to ChatGPT, it's just going up exponentially. And think of this as a consumer. If I tell you now, I give you an AI, which will do 50% of the work for you that you do in exchange for a salary, how much are you willing to pay for it? More than zero dollars? more than $100, more than $500, perhaps $1,000 per month? The answer is yes. And it's not only true that the AI would do your job for you. It can go and do 10 times your job for you too. So there's actually no limit to how much capital you can allocate because the productivity is just going to go up. And so in the NVIDIA earnings call, what we saw is Jensen stating very clearly that the AI scaling laws are doing well and that they're actually not only persisting, they're actually accelerating. And so, so long as AI scaling laws persist, what we're actually going to see is extraordinary fundamentals. So let me share the screen now with Microsoft's fundamentals, which I think you're really going to enjoy looking at. Right. So the orange line is Microsoft's free cash flow per share. The orange bar chart is Microsoft's cash from operating activities. And the blue line is Microsoft's CapEx, capital expenditures. So you can see that even though CapEx is big, and everyone's concerned about it. That's the blue bar chart. Actually, the orange bar chart is a lot bigger. And that's the cash that they produce from operating activities. Then free cash flow per share continues to trend up. Remember that LLMs came out roughly around here. And so you can see how much free cash flow per share is up. You can see how much actual cash from operating activities is up too. And now let me show you another metric, which I think is very insightful. Here's where it gets really interesting, and here's why I actually agree with Dan Ives, and that's that the purple line, which is total debt, has trended down since 2017. And this is different to 2001 in that companies were investing a lot of cash, but because it wasn't actually delivering incremental value to customers, the debt profiles were ballooning because the businesses didn't make sense. What we have here is fundamentals that make more and more sense over time. They actually improve over time as Microsoft continues to invest in AI. Now consider the same graph for NVIDIA. You can see that the orange bar chart is NVIDIA's cash from operating activities. The blue bar chart is NVIDIA's cash uh, designated towards capital expenditures. And total debt is the orange line. You can see how the cash they produce is just going up exponentially. The debt is basically flat since 2021. And CapEx is going up, but not nearly as much as the cash that they produce. So for these two businesses, what you see is fundamentals improving, unit economics making increasing sense. It just the fundamentals are damn near perfect. It has nothing to do with what we saw in 2001 or even 2021. If you continue the analysis for Palantir, AMD, and other companies of the sort, you will, see, you will continue seeing this. The fundamentals are just getting better and better as more compute continues to equate to more intelligence. So the question is really what has to happen for this bullish thesis to break? And that is AI scaling laws have to not persist. The moment the AI scaling laws break, then the entire AI revolution goes to waste. But for now, as Jensen confirmed, the AI scaling laws are not only intact, they are actually accelerating. And again, the thesis is that Jensen is cooking the books, right? That's what people are incrementally saying. I'm willing to bet that Jensen is absolutely not cooking the books because he has zero incentive 
to do so. It doesn't make any sense. And so I think the AI revolution is very much alive. I think that once investors are done vomiting, we probably go back to a relatively healthy tech market. And actually, as many of you know that watch this podcast regularly, I believe we're actually in a bear market. Because as I say many times, in 2021, people were buying land in the metaverse next to Travis Scott. Fundamentals were not even that good. People were just assuming we were going to live in the metaverse. There were no bears, no bearish thesis. And then after that, we had a crash, right? Going into 2022. And so what we see now is different. What we see now is fundamentals that are improving in tandem with the AI scaling rules. So as AI capabilities double every six months, these companies just make more and more money and they print more and more cash. So it's just almost too good to be true. And humanity's knee-jerk reaction every two or three months is to question the nature of this reality. So I think that so long as AI scaling laws persist, I think tech investors are going to continue doing very well. As long-term tech investors, we look out five years in time at least, at the very least two or three. And I think that fundamentals are positioned to continue doing very well. So guys, thank you very much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this update, could you please share this with one friend whom you think will enjoy it? These deep dives and updates that I do are for free. And so the only way this grows is with your help. So thank you very much in advance. Take care and until next time.